So Holland was a guitar virtuoso, a composer, and a fabulous arranger, and a method writer. Tell us about his work and its significance in 19th century America. His work was extremely significant. You know, they even say that he was a household name to, to most right. amateur guitarists, you know, right. which, which is amazing to me. Sure. And many of them, including his publishers, didn't know he was black. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So um, I think that also explains why he spent most of his time teaching, arranging, and writing and not performing as much. You know, it just wasn't widely acceptable for, for a free black person. Was he trying to stay out of the limelight, basically? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, he was trying to maybe stay out of the limelight or just, you know, wasn't, these opportunities weren't afforded to him. I see. You know? mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he was a master teacher, always thinking of ways to motivate his students. Mm -hmm. And one way was to start making these arrangements for his students, his own arrangements, you know, and, and, in addition to like the soar and the aguado, he would make his own. Um, arrangements and small compositions for them. These arrangements, you know, just started getting passed around and caught the attention of some publishers. And the publishers loved him, and he became, um, you know, one of the most celebrated arrangers of the 19th century. Whenever there was a popular tune, yeah. you know, that would be arranged for the guitars, publishers would go to him and say, we want this for the guitar, you know, and then he would, he would get it out. And he was highly prolific. He arranged over um, 300 works for the guitar and he composed, um, they say, about 30, 35 pieces. Unfortunately, most of his arrangements and his uh, original compositions, um, just they didn't survive. No one knows where they are. I would love to find the rest of them someday. Has there been a, a real concerted effort to uncover you know, more information about Hans' life and his work and perhaps pieces you said are missing? Yeah, there's been some, some people uh, who've done some dissertations on it. Um, and you know they, they it's just a lot of his life you know is it's it's hard to really track you know at those sure. times the records weren't kept as well and maybe no. for a black american even less mm -hmm. um so you know even it's difficult to to find some of the records of him at oberlin you know and maybe it's because he didn't graduate and then the publisher that he worked with s, s. Brainer and sons um they're not around anymore so we don't oh, know really? what oh. happened to okay. those mm -hmm. um but there is, there's still a good amount of works, you know, over a hundred um, that, that exist at the Library of Congress and at Cal State Northridge. And, you know, so, so um, my dad and I, you know, early on, before I went off to Oberlin and Yale, it was part, we wanted to find everything that he did. Mm -hmm. um, so we wrote to someone named Donald Sauter, early kind of Justin H Holland enthusiast and amateur guitarist, but, um, you know, had a lot of recordings of his music on his website, you know. I, I contacted him and um, paid him to go to the Library of Congress to get everything there was of Justin Hollins there and had him mail it to us. I had a, a stack of, of sheet music about this high um, that arrived in the mail from him. And then a couple years later, my dad and I made a trip up to uh, Cal State Northridge to, and we photocopied everything that was there. So looking at, at what has survived, I think I, I have everything that exists, you know, still. Um, but, you know, hopefully some young person that maybe is not even in college yet will, his, dissert, his or her dissertation will be finding Doing a survived. deep dive on yeah, all on Yeah, doing it. a deep dive <laughs> of finding everything there is that, mm -hmm. that survives.